Shabbos Daf Samach Aleph. We learned in the Mishnah that if a person has one shoe on one foot, it's also for him to go out into Rishus Rabbim if he doesn't have a wound. The concern is, according to Rashi, one of two possibilities. Either we're concerned that people might think that he's carrying his second shoe, or perhaps people might make fun of him that he only has one shoe, and then he'll remove that one shoe that he has. It's mashma from the Mishnah that if a person does have a wound, he's permitted to go out with one shoe. The machlekes is, on what foot is he wearing that one shoe? According to Rav Huna, he's wearing that shoe on the foot that has the injury. And we don't have the two reasons. Since he has an injury, and since Rav Huna holds that the reason why you wear a shoe is for protection purposes, not for comfort purposes, he won't remove the shoe when he's made fun of, because it's going to hurt him. And people are not going to think that he's hiding a second shoe because they see that he's injured. According to Chia Barav, he wears the one shoe on the foot that does not have an injury. And again, since they see him limping, they realize that yes, the reason why a person wears a shoe, according to Chia Barav, is for comfort and not for protection. They see him limping, and therefore he doesn't have a shoe on the injured foot. They won't make fun of him. Or, if the reason is because they might think that he's carrying a second shoe, they won't think that because they see that he's limping. Rabbi Yochanan once asked for his shoes, and he was given the right shoe, the shoe for his right foot. And he commented and he said, You created, you made it as if I have an injury. The simple meaning would be, since they gave him the right foot, and Rabbi Yochanan holds that you have to put your left foot on first, therefore he would not put on his left foot because he already put on his right foot shoe. They're going to think that he has an injury on his right foot, like Ravuna that says that you're supposed to put the shoe on the foot that has the injury. But perhaps you could say, no, a Sisei Maka is not referring to the foot that he just put the shoe on. Perhaps it's referring to his left foot. You made my left foot an injured foot. Rabbi Yochanan holds that a shoe is like tefillin. Just like a righty puts his tefillin on the left hand, so too, when it comes to shoes, you put the left shoe on first. There's a brisa though that says you're supposed to put on the right shoe first. Therefore, the Gemara says, if your minig is like the right shoe first, then you go like that. If you want to put on the left shoe, you put on the left shoe. And in fact, the Gemara says, Ravashi saw that Rav Kahana didn't mind. He put on either one first. The Gemara says, however, that a Yeresha Mayim could be Yaitse both. What do you do? You first put on your right shoe, then you put on the left shoe. You tie the left shoe, and then you tie the right shoe. Of course, if you have a slipping shoe, says Taisvis, you put the right on first. The Bryce says you put on the right shoe first, but when it comes to taking off shoes, you take your left shoe off first. When you bathe yourself, you bathe the right side of your body, your right arm before your left arm, your right foot before your left foot, etc. If you're bathing your entire body, you start from the head. The head is the king of all your limbs, and you start from there. It says in the Mishnah, do not go out on Shabbos with your tefillin. Rav Safar said one of two things. Either he said that this is going even according to the Manda Omer that says that Shabbos, you do wear tefillin on Shabbos. Nevertheless, do not go outside because perhaps you'll have to go to the bathroom and you'll have to remove the tefillin and you'll be carrying Dalad Amos or Another way to learn Rav Safra is that it says in the Mishnah that if you did go out with tefillin and all the other things in the Mishnah, you're not chayev achatos. So Rav Safra says, even if you hold like the Manorma that says, Shabbos is not a time to put on tefillin, you're still not chayev achatos because tefillin is like a lavosh. It's like a beged. It's clothing. People wear it during the week as clothing. It says in the Mishnah that a person should not go out into Shusarabim with a kamea that's not a mumcha, with an amulet that wasn't written by a professional. If it's written by a professional, then he could go out with an Rishus Rabbim. It's there to heal him. Even if it's a professional kamea, meaning that the person that wrote it is a professional. Certainly, if the kamea itself, the amulet itself, already healed people, he could go out with an Rishus Rabbim. It doesn't make a difference if the amulet is words written or it's grasses and different herbs. Even if the person doesn't have a disease that's dangerous, he's a chayla she'em sakana. even if he's not even sick, he's just concerned that perhaps because of his genetic makeup, he will have a particular disease. His family has epilepsy, for instance. He 
he could wear a kamea, he could tie it and untie it in Rosh Rabbim. As long as it's not on a bracelet or on a ring, because then it's a Marasayim, people might think that he's carrying it as jewelry, and that's also. What exactly is a kamea mumcha? There seems to be some confusion in the sugya between the Rishonim, even within Rashi himself, there seems to be contradiction. We're going to go according to Rashi, based on some Rishonim. If a person wrote three kameas, three amulets for three different diseases, and they all worked, this particular person is a mumcha. He could write any kind of kamea for any disease, and you're allowed to carry it on Shabbos. If he wrote one kamea, which worked three times for the same disease, even on one person, the same disease, three times on one person, that particular kamea is a mumcha. In other words, anybody in the world could write that exact kamea, and it will be considered a kamea mumcha, and you can walk out with it on Shabbos. The Gemara remains in a teiku. What happens if he wrote three kameas for three different diseases, but for the same person? And they all worked. Do we say, look, he knows what he's doing, he's a professional, he was able to heal three diseases. Or perhaps you say, the person that was healed, he has a special mazel that he's healed by these kameas. The Gemara remains in a suffolk. The halacha is that a kamea and brachas, such as the brachas of Shemar Esri and Rosh Hashanah, even though they have the name of Hashem and Psukim, you don't save them from a fire on Shabbos. However, obviously you have to bury them, Gniza, just like you would bury even a foot, a leg of a table that has a Shem Hashem on it. If a kamea is covered with leather, you could bring it into the bathroom. If it's made out of herbs, you can bring it into the bathroom. If it's a chayla that has a sakana, it's, his life is in danger, he could go into the bathroom even if it's not covered with leather. But a, a, somebody that's not a chayla shish by sakana, if it's covered with leather, he may go into the bathroom with it. Even a chayla shish by sakana, he's in imminent danger. He's not allowed to walk Dalad Amis and Rishus Rabbim with the Kamea. Tefillin that seem like they are covered with leather, but since they have a shin, and the shin is part of Shem Hashem, because we have a Dalad on the back of the Ritzuas of Tefillin Shorosh, and we have a Yud on the Tefillin Shalyad, together they spell Hashem's name, therefore it's usher to go into the bathroom with Tefillin. Have a wonderful day.